I know you you were advocating at the Supreme Court. I think it was last week, right? Because, or maybe it was this week, that the, the Supreme Court is looking at Biden's, Biden's proposal. giveaway to people who own who debt. giveaway is your term, not my term. Well, we are. They have college debt. Long, yeah. Okay, and we're going to give them money. Are we're going to we, forgive debt. Well, we're, <laughs> okay. we're arguing about the same thing, but there was no argument. We're giving the money away. Okay, so I just want to read you this. And again, this is against why people sometimes, I think, question some of what you're saying. Uh, this is a survey, student loan forgiveness recipients. 73% of applicants say they are likely to spend their extra money on non-essential, including vacations, smartphone, drugs, and alcohol. They, they admitted that to the pollster. Now, who is this pollster? I, NBC, <laughs> NBC News. 52% um, they are very likely or likely to buy new clothing. 46% they would use the money for vacation and eat out at restaurants. This is why people have a thing about, I, I would never call it free money. Oh, I guess I just did, but... Um... <laughs> well, I, I mean, let me respond to that in two ways, Bill. You're talking about giveaways. Under Trump, the Congress voted for a trillion dollars in tax breaks for the richest people in this money, in this country, and the largest corporations. That's a giveaway. We no. just increased military spending with very little discussion, I don't know if you know this, by $80 billion. Military industrial complex... Including the Democrats. Pardon they, me? The Democrats vote for it, too. Yes, absolutely correct. Absolutely yeah. right. All right. But that's socialism, the military. That's crony socialism. Well, that's... Right? Crony capitalism. But, but the it, military uh, isn't capitalism. That's, that's the government. No, but it's who owns the military-industrial complexes. All right, but anyhow. Right. All right. So when you talk about giveaways, you have major corporations in this country that make billions in profit, don't pay a nickel in taxes. Billionaires have an effective tax rate lower than that of a truck driver or a nurse. You have a generation, you talk about this younger generation right now. I got around the country and I talked to a lot of people. You know, I don't know anything about that poll, but I can tell you, I've talked to nurses who are working their asses off, doing the right thing. They leave school $70,000 in that. They can't afford now to get married and have children. They can't afford the housing that they desperately need. So the truth is you've got a generation that everything being equal, the younger generation will have a lower standard of living than their parents. You and I, and I'm a little older than you, can remember 50 years ago, what did it cost to go to the University of California? Remember? 50 bucks? 50, yeah. 500? Virtually free. City yeah. University of New York. Right. Virtually free. And right well, now these young people are leaving school deeply in debt. They're struggling economically. They deserve a break. <laughs> Yeah, I couldn't agree more. Um, in the, but in the, in the book, you say you feel like the Democratic Party, uh, and you, you take your shots at them, and, you know, you're not, you caucus with them and you run as one, but you're not completely part of them. Right. Uh, you say they feel like they uh, abandoned their cause to the beautiful people. Who are the beautiful people? I'm guessing it's hey, not Hey, Bill! <laughs> <laughs> you're looking really beautiful tonight here in L.A. <laughs> Me? <laughs> Thank you, Bernie. <laughs> well, here's the point. Here, the point that I was making is when FDR was president, when Truman was president, even when JFK was president, you go out on the street and you say to people, which party represents the working class of America? Most people, I think, agree, would have said the Democratic Party. Correct. All right. Today you go out on the street and that is not the sentiment. In fact, the Republican Party probably has more adherence than, than to the Democrats. How did that happen? I'll tell you how it happened. It happened because 30 years ago, the Democrats said, hey, Republicans are getting all this corporate money. We want it too. Let's go out and get it. And let's forget about the people who are working 50 or 60 hours a week. So you're sitting out there somewhere in the Midwest. You can't afford health care. Maybe your job went to China and you're earning half of what you used to make. Your kid can't afford to go to college. And you're looking at people on television doing all of their stuff, and you are saying, who the hell gives a damn about me? All right? Who cares what my life is about? Who's addressing the crises facing my life, the pain that I'm experiencing? We have something, I don't know if you're familiar with the expression, it's called diseases of despair. Of course. All right. And what the doctors tell us, we have a life expectancy above and beyond COVID, which is in decline. It's in decline because people feel hopeless, their jobs are taking them nowhere, worried about their kids, 
and they're turning to alcohol, drugs, and even suicide, all right? We've got to restore hope to the American people. Working class are the majority of people in this country. They are hurting. After 50 years of exploding technology, they're earning less than they did than they, than they did before. All right? You sound like you're running again. Third, <laughs> no? Third no, time? I'm just talking about the book here. Third but, time the charm? You people usually write a book when they're about to run. Well. No. <laughs> <laughs>